Hello, everyone. Welcome to Electromixer.com. I'm your host today, Meredith Molinari, with some of the many members of Juno Reactor. Thank you guys so much for being in the studio with us today. Now, as you guys can see at home, your band combines lots of different members. You guys also have special vocalists that come in, and you do lots of collaborations. When did you start the idea of kind of a revolving door policy with your band? How'd you get hooked on that? I can't remember. <laughs> that, was that long ago? It's just been like this always? Um, well, I, I, I think I sacked the, the Europeans in 97 <laughs> when they refused to go on the Moby tour because they didn't like Moby. Ah, oh, okay. And I'd been working with these guys in South Africa. And I thought, well, you know, this has worked. They, they really wanted to come on tour, and I thought it was suddenly the whole band started to really work a lot better live. Really, so you could feel it just mesh immediately. You yeah, guys get just together? kick out the Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> that's the easiest part. Get rid of them. Oh, no, Taz is European, so that's all right. So you kept Since, one around for good measure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> your music has a lot of different cultural inspirations. Do you start your songs with a with an idea or an image in mind, or does that part kind of just come naturally throughout? Usually a pin and a map. Okay. A pin and a just map. Just close your it. eyes and throw one? Or? Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I like on your MySpace page, you said on your band members, it says you just need a passport. I think that's a good thing. That's a so great another way to look planet. At. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I've got one of those. Only yeah. the government will let me have one. You can have one if you want. Okay. Maybe we'll work that out later. Yeah. <laughs> Give you a visa. Ooh. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Better what? than my visa card. That one's, yeah? that one's no good. Okay. No. <laughs> so when you guys approach the, the music process together, because there's so many different sounds and so many different cultures that come together, do someone come in and, and start with a, a drum beat? What, what inspires each of your songs as they come out together? Um, it, different, everything's different, whether it's uh, drums or bass or a vocal or an idea from a newspaper or a film. Okay. So there's not one set way of doing it and, and whatever works for the album, really. So with your album, uh, Gods and Monsters, which was released earlier this year, did you go into that with a certain theme or did you just kind of go, hey, let's do number I wanted seven? It, I wanted it like sort of gods and monsters, but sort of a bit like... Um, Pretty vague, really. Okay. Yeah, like now I feel really vague. <laughs> leave so, it up to those of us yeah. home. You like to leave us with more questions than give us answers, I, I think bet. so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stick around. We're going to be right back with a lot more from Juno Reactor here today on Electro Mixer. I'm Meredith Molinari. Don't go anywhere. Welcome once again to ElectroMixer.com. I'm your host today, Meredith Molinari, with the members of Juno Reactor. I have to ask, what is a Juno Reactor? Maybe. Mabi is the personification of Juno Reactor. So we're talking about your album, Gods and Monsters. This is your seventh album? Yeah. Wow. Does it feel like number seven? Do you feel like you've been doing this your whole life? Or does yes. it feel... Yes. It does. <laughs> does it, is it hard to continually come up with like new imagery? How do you keep it's it sounding so fresh? Really? Yeah. I need a new brain. New brain? You got any uh, takers out there? A little donor maybe? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know that you wouldn't want to give up your brain if it's created all this amazing music so far. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's a collect. It's, it's, it is a collective. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's whoever's really involved in Planet Juno and really, you know. So it's luckily it's not just my brain. It wouldn't come up with all of it. For sure. <laughs> well, you get tired. You know, you got to bring in some other brains every once in a while. Oh. And on this album, Squid. you worked with a lot of people. Exactly. You worked with a lot of people yeah, on this album. Right. Uh, the guitar phenom from Japan, Sugizo, who's yeah. not with us today, but he's on the album. How did you guys meet up? Um, I was doing the album. I was doing their album in, in Ben's studio. Okay. And I nicked him. Ben, you <laughs> stole him. Stole him. <laughs> I said this guy's not appreciated enough, yeah. and I want him. There you go. So yes, you do just go out and you're just like, I want that guy and take him. Well, I saw him live. Like I've worked with him in the studio, and he was by far the nicest guy out that whole horrible band. Okay. <laughs> and Thank you. Extra right. Extra <laughs> not not the Asian Dumb Foundation because they're all lovely guys. Totally different. Oh, lovely guys. Totally lovely guys. guys. <laughs> but Ex Foundation, no I saw him live on stage and I thought, now that guy is killer. Yeah. He can talk to many people in one go. So I thought, you know, he's just got to be part of Juno Reactor. That's it, and you just took him right up, and you fit in right away, and just felt like it all meshed together. <laughs> Very cool. Now you have the. I'm gonna pronounce this right. I'm the Pondo. Yeah. How did you How did you guys hook up together? Because you're an amazing percussionist, which adds such a, a a tribal feel to the already multicultural sounds of Juno Reactor. 
How did how did you hook up with them? When did you decide well, I need some tribal drums? I was I was re- I was producing a Zulu band in Johannesburg, mm-hmm. and Mabi was asleep in the corridor like a little mouse. <laughs> He's been a little mouse, wasn't he, Mabi? <laughs> and, um, and I literally fell over him. Literally, tripped right over. Literally, and I said, "Who's that little guy? That drunk guy over there?" <laughs> like, he wasn't really drunk, wasn't he, Mabi? <laughs> and was lying on the floor, and so so. All of them came in and did the percussion for the Zulu band, and we got it was pretty much from there on, wasn't it? Really. That's it. And you were like, "I want them," and you just so you're just basically going around collecting all the amazing musicians for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna find a lot more about that. Stick around. We're gonna have a lot more here with Juno Reactor on Electro Mixer. I'm your host today, Meredith Molinari. Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome once again to Electromixer.com. I'm your host today, Meredith Molinari, with the members of Juno Reactor, chatting about your seventh album, Gods and Monsters. Now, with a title like that, there's got to be some kind of religious symbolism going on. I mean, there's a song called Immaculate Crucifixion. Bless you. You made him sneeze. I know, that was it, Immaculate Crucifixion. What's you? You mentioned the, the magic word. <laughs> He's allergic to religion. And he ejaculated. Happens. A lot of people have that affliction, I you understand. <laughs> but is there some level of religious symbolism throughout the album, do you think? Um, not really. Not really. I'm it's, just pulling that out of here. different gods and different monsters, you know. How sort of, the sort of, um, really innocuous or sort of ready invisible people can be the gods so more with the gods and monsters within yourself necessarily within yourself tangible. and outside but you know just you know the yeah some of that Inca Stepper mm-hmm. I don't know really it's all, it's, all, it's all inside my head that I'd have to ra- unravel it and it'd take too long now <laughs> I don't know if we have that much time to unravel but it's your not really brain. about religious <laughs> in the, on this particular album I don't think it's religious like Las Vegas it's like a monster of a city that's mm-hmm. sort of an environmental disaster <laughs> You know, so. There's a lot of monsters living in Las Vegas. We can all attest to that, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great look. It looks like a god place, but it's already like a monstrosity. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's that great just juxtaposition of it, of like the good and evil, the light and the dark. Yeah, it is really just good out. and evil. Yeah. Ready. Now, this is your first U.S. tour since 2001, so I have to ask, why'd you stay away so long? Money. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That happens. It's an expensive... It's, it's an expensive show to put on the road. Yeah. As you can see, and, and it's just, it's money. It's hard, but you guys been having a good time on the tour so far? Yeah. So far it's been good. You hit Denver and Aspen. Mexico. San Francisco. You did a huge international festival at yeah. Chihuahua, Mexico. Chihuahua, How did that go? Chihuahua, Jerez. Brilliant. Really yeah? fantastic. So. How, were the crowds just insane? Because I was looking on some of your YouTube videos, and there's all these people writing like, Oh my God, they're going to be in Chihuahua. That's my hometown tomorrow. <laughs> Everyone was so excited about Chihuahua, Mexico. Was it was it a big festival? Were there a lot of other acts, or was it... It was just us. Just you guys. I mean, well, there's like, they, they have like a month of, like, is it, is it not Pavarotti? Um, Placido Domingo. So it's like a really massive international arts festival. Okay, so it wasn't... And so just... like us, on that night, it was us. That's cool. Yeah, so, and they had like a Brazilian ballet company. Nice. And they, you didn't go try and steal any of them for your acting. Well, I did. I wanted to. Yeah, uh huh. I thought so. I wanted to until Greg started telling me they're all men. <laughs> so that is hard to tell. I, I mean, I thought I thought all these I thought all these women look gorgeous. You know, that's, that's that's a little sad. I have to say, living here in Los Angeles, when I see some of the the men that make better women than I do, and I'm just like, really. Well, and, and Greg so kept on saying, "That's a chick with a dick." <laughs> <laughs> that's a different surprise that you don't. And that's surprised I was still interested. <laughs> <laughs> you did make the opera singer, though. I did. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we stole an opera singer from the press conference. You just stole her right out of her own press conference. You're like, yoink. I think he really was a man. This one. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was a woman. We a little Victor, Victor Victoria thing, a woman pretending to be a yeah. man, pretending to be a woman, but maybe. Like, it, I thought, well, you know, it'd be really great to have a Mexican opera singer sing with us, so he came and did a tune. Very cool. And you also did a collaboration with uh, Yasmin Levy on Tanta yeah. Pena. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, really amazing. If you guys get a chance, definitely go and, and check that out. You can find all their tracks on their MySpace page, myspace.com slash Juno underscore reactor. Or you can check out the ReactorLeaks.com download store, which is going to have exclusive tracks, live footage, and eventually it'll have the full back catalog. So definitely go to ReactorLeak.com and check that out. Stick around for more with Juno Reactor here today.